You destroy the forest, you destroy the water because instead of flowing in coolness under the shade of trees, which is the way nature ordains for water to flow, it flows out in the sunlight and loses its energy. One of the great elements, the factors in water, which Victor was able to put his finger on, was that of temperature. When we are healthy, we say we haven't got a temperature. And water hasn't got a temperature when its temperature is four degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water is at its most dense. It has its highest energy content. It has its greatest life-giving potential at that temperature. And when the temperature increases above four degrees or below four degrees, then water gets less dense. And this anomaly point of water, and it's anomalous because all other liquids become consistently denser with cooling. Water is the only liquid which stops getting denser at four degrees and starts getting less dense below that. Oxygen is always present at all processes of growth and decay. And in water, which sphere it is active in depends on the water temperature. The critical temperature phase between one and the other is, according to Victor Schauberger, about 9 degrees centigrade. Victor saw a completely different view of phenomena, the water as a living substance, but the water itself was a transformer and receiver and emitter. It transformed the energies of the cosmos and the energies of the earth. And in this area, we also have to differentiate between the forces from the cosmos, which Victor viewed as being male, and the forces of the Earth, which were female. And water was what he called the first substance, the first born. And it was born through the interaction of the elements of the Earth and the cosmos, and more particularly, the sun. And it was the sun's fertilizing influence on water through oxygen, which in Victor's view was a lower form of solar radiation, which created the marvel that is water, or made out of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in that combination. So coming back to this operation of oxygen in water and how it functions in water, it is the inseminator in both cases of growth and decay. But when it's in a beneficial mode, then it is at a temperature below nine degrees, the carbon substances or the carbons of the earth, which Victor grouped all together as under the name mother substances. These were every element except for oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen was the carrier substance, oxygen was male, and fertilizing and all the other substances were female. And if you think of the word material itself, it has its origins in the Latin word mater, which means mother. And so perhaps if we think of it in this way, then you get an idea of what mother substances mean. And when oxygen is bound or is fertilized under cool conditions, then the female part of the interaction surrounds the oxygen which is passive and then the energies are transferred in such a way or transformed in such a way as to provide creative growing beneficial things and this is the interaction of oxygen and the mother substances below nine degrees once the temperature goes above nine degrees, then the oxygen becomes aggressive and it binds the mother substances, that it, it surrounds the mother substances who then become passive. And in that situation, parasitic and bacterial life forms evolve. When we approach a new way of designing or a new way of looking at moving water, for instance, then we have to design a process which allows water to change and to transform and to move and to be itself, fundamentally to be itself. In the 
reticulation of water for drinking purposes, it's important to generate this longitudinal vortex. While the central flow is a simple spiral, the external peripheral flows is a double spiral movement, a rotation about the central spiral, which acts in a way like ball bearings and uh, facilitates the faster flow of the central core water. This double spiral movement is inaugurated by the emplacement of guide vanes which deflect the water from an otherwise straight path into a spiral path. And these, in Victor Schauberger's concept, would be silver-plated copper placed in a wooden pipe at certain intervals to create or provoke or promote this centripetal spiral flow. This spiral movement is the rejuvenating movement which endows water with fresh energy and also uh, because of the movement and because of the way the oxygen is separated from the core water initially and diverted to the outside certain bacteria and pathogenic bacteria anaerobic bacteria are exposed to excess oxygen and die off and in the process uh, the longer the movement down such a pipe the purer and the more bacteria-free the water becomes. Water has certain patterns of motion. It has certain energies, and these energies are derived from its motion. And unless it is able to move in the way that generates its energies, then it becomes a sluggish and slack. But it's very important for water to be able to generate a longitudinal vortex in its flow which enables it not only to reoxygenate itself but also to cool itself. The oxygen is passive and it's not aggressive towards the water itself because of this movement the water is cool and after it has disposed of all the pathogens by over oxygenating them then it returns to seek union with those mother substances which are as yet unfertilized. And this increases the energy, and of course there's a certain amount of birth of new water in the process. So you have a tremendous rejuvenation of the water body on the way to the point of delivery. The core of the vortices is identifiably cooler than the surrounding water masses, by as much maybe as 0.2 of a degree centigrade. So in their summation of all these little cooling processes, then the water, when allowed to flow naturally, cools itself quite considerably. And so the vortex is a cooling process. Not only that, the water re-energizes itself and it also divests itself of harmful parasites, pathogens and so on. Because of the difference in the specific weight of oxygen, and hydrogen in the water and other substances, the oxygen is thrown to the side of the pipe and directed to the pipe walls. Water moving in such a way can transport ores and other material similar to that down the middle, down the center of the water vortex without touching the sides and actually can improve the quality of the ores such as iron ore in transit on the way to the point of use because as the oxygen is gradually consumed, some of it by the extermination of pathogenic bacteria, there is a reduction process occurring in the water flow itself. So the iron ore is already partially reduced, so to speak, um, before it arrives at the smelter. Our spinal column in German is expressed as a spiral column. And each of the vertebra are called vortices. And so when you take this image in conjunction with the German view of the structure which upholds the human body, then here again in their concept it is also related to movement and vortical movement. 